When you open Blender for the first time, you'll see three items on the screen. This is a camera, this is a light, and this is our main default object, the default cube. You can move the screen around by holding the middle mouse button and moving your mouse. If you hold shift down while pressing the middle mouse button, you could pan side to side and up and down. To select an item, simply click on the item. To delete an item, press X on the keyboard and then click on delete. We don't need the camera and we also don't need the light. So go ahead and click X and then delete. To move an object around, simply select the item and go over here to the move tool. And then we could simply drag this arrow up and let's move the default cube right there so it's above the ground plane. We could also rotate the object and scale the object by using the rotate tool and the scale tool. To exit the scale tool or any of these other tools over here on the left, simply go back to the select box tool. You could use this to select multiple items even though we only have one item on the screen right now. To see the details of this object, press N as a Nancy on the keyboard. And now here we can see all the details of the object, the location, rotation, the scale, and the dimensions of our object. Now you'll notice our object is in meters right now. Uh, if you're 3D printing an object or designing something for 3D printing, a lot of times you'll want it to be in millimeters since that's what 3D printers are in. So to change the units of Blender, go over to the scene properties here and then click on units and let's change the length to millimeters and the unit scale to 0 0.001. Now, once you do that, you'll see the grid disappears. So we'll need to scale the grid as well. So let's go up here to this drop down, and we'll change the scale of the grid to 0 0.001. And now our grid looks normal. And now we can see our cube is two by two by two millimeters. We can manually set the dimensions of the object by just changing these values here. Let's say we want it to be 60 millimeters by 60 millimeters by five millimeters. If we zoom out, we can see our object and it has these precise dimensions. Now let's say we want to make some sort of container and we actually want to edit this shape. Um, and not just change the dimensions of it. Blender has two different modes that are mainly used. If you go to the top left, you can see we're in object mode right now. That's where you could scale, move, rotate the entire object. But if you want to edit the object, click this drop down and go into edit mode. So here you can see the two main modes, object mode, where you just move the object around and edit mode, where you actually edit the object. And when we go into edit mode, you'll see if I deselect everything by clicking outside of everything, I could select on these nodes. And these nodes are what makes the object this object. I could also switch to the edge selection mode, where you could select on the edges, and face selection mode, where you could select the faces. So let's go back to the vertex or the node selection mode. So now you can see we can select on the nodes again. On the left here are a bunch of tools that we can use. There's extrude, there is inset, bevel, and these are very common tools that you'll use. For example, uh, let's do the inset faces uh, tool. So we select on inset faces and we'll actually have to, it looks like we'll go back into the face selection mode and we can select on this face. And now if we grab this here, you can see we're insetting that face. So basically, it's allowing us to create some walls here. Okay, so once you have the thickness of the walls that you like, go ahead and click. And now we can go to the extrude tool and select. Uh, we'll have to actually select multiple faces. So I'm going to click escape. Let's see, uh, control Z. Control Z to get out of it. Um, go up to the selection tool and let's select multiple faces by selecting the faces and holding down shift. So now we have multiple faces selected and we could go to the extrude tool here and extrude these faces up. And let's go about, you can see the dimensions on the top left. Let's go to about 40 millimeters right there. Now if I zoom out, hold shift to pan while using the middle mouse button. And you can see, do you like that? And we say, yep, that looks good. 
and then go ahead and press, uh, I guess just click outside of it to confirm. And now we have our box. So now let's say we want to have another smaller container attached to this one. Well, to do that, we can select both of these faces and uh, select the extrude tool. I already had it selected, so it's already set to extrude it. And simply pull this out just like that. That looks good. And now we can inset this top face. So select that top face and click the inset face tool. Drag this in like that. And then what we could do is press extrude and this time we could pull it in like this. And maybe this one's a little bit shallower and not quite as deep for holding some smaller items. I just extruded it twice, so I'm going to press Control Z. And there we go. Just like that. If you continue to do it again, it'll keep extruding. Uh, but I don't want to do that, so I'm going to press Control Z, Control Z, and just leave it at that one extrude down just like that. So let's say we want to modify it a little bit more. So let's go back to the regular selection tool and let's go to the point selection, point vertex or node. I'll use all three of those interchangeably. Um, officially, it's the vertex selection mode. And now we can select on these points here by clicking and dragging. If you hold shift, we can select these other two points. Now we have all four points selected. And we can actually move these points by going to the Move tool. So now if we pull it down like this, we could change the, the side of the container to be a little bit lower on this side, like this. And maybe we want to select these two and pull that up like this and, I don't know, kind of have an edge like that maybe. Maybe we want the edge to kind of be level with it kind of like that and we can do the same to these top two points like this and just pull them down so that way it has a nice even slant and let's say we try to select all of the points it may look like we have all the points selected but we actually don't there's some points in the back or here that aren't selected so we can see through the object by using what's called the x-ray tool or the x-ray mode uh, toggle x-ray and if we select this button up here on the top right, now we could select through the entire object and select all of the points. So without it, you won't be able to select any points that are hidden in the back. But if you want to be able to see through the object and select all of the points, just toggle the x-ray mode. We don't need that right now. I think everything is fine how it is. So there is our custom container. And the last thing we could do is add some custom text to the side. So here's where it's going to get a little bit tricky. Right now, remember, we're in edit mode. We could edit all of the vertices. But to add some text, it'll be smart to go back into object mode and make the text a separate object. So let's go back up here and let's go to object mode. Now, to create a new object, we're going to go to add. All of the objects that we're making in Blender are meshes. So here we have some default objects. Cube, that's what we started with. Um, there's also a sphere, uh, icosphere, it's a little different type of sphere, how it's made, and a cylinder, cone, and torus. There's even the crazy kind of monkey. Um, but for text, uh, we're gonna go down to a 2D object, which is just text. Okay, and there it is, it's really small. Uh, we can see both of our objects up here. We have the cube. We can select on the cube like this from this uh, area here. And we can go to the text. And right now our text is hidden behind this object. So with it selected up here, let's go to the move tool. And let's drag the text over here. And it's really tiny. So let's go to our scale tool and grab the circle to scale the whole object. And scale it however big you want it to be. Just like this and now the last thing we'll have to do is rotate it 90 degrees so we'll go to the rotate button and we'll rotate it with the red circle and we'll try to make it 90 degrees um, it's hard to get it exact so what we could do is go to this panel here if yours is closed remember you could open and close this panel by pressing n that'll show us the item properties and we can manually set the rotation to exactly 90. Okay, there we go. 
And now to edit the text, we can go into edit mode for the text. Now simply just type whatever you want. I'm going to type in 3D printer return, A-C-A-D-E-M-Y, 3D printer academy, just like that. Okay, and now we're done editing the text. So we could go back into object mode all right that looks good now let's position the text where we want it to go so i'm going to drag it this way drag it back up go over here to the side drag it so it's just in front of the object maybe a little bit of extra space like this and make sure it's centered okay but now there's a problem this text is a 2d object and it's not connected to our custom container. So now remember how I said all of the 3D objects in Blender are meshes. This object right here is uh, not a mesh. You can see a mesh has these uh, this icon up here on the top right. You, you can see it has the vertices, the edges, and a face. But our text is technically a curve. So we'll have to go and convert the text into a mesh. So we could go to uh, object, up here and go all the way down and go to convert and now we're going to convert since we're already a curve we want to convert it to a mesh okay so now if we go back over here to all of the objects in the scene we now have two meshes but we still have a two-dimensional mesh see how it's infinitely thin like this we need to extrude it and make it 3d so let's go into edit mode and now you'll notice in edit mode, we no longer can type uh, the, the letters anymore and numbers. Uh, now we just have nodes and edges like a normal mesh. Um, to select everything, another way you can select everything is by pressing A on the keyboard for selecting all of the, the objects, whether it's nodes, edges, or faces. You can press A to select everything. And now let's extrude everything that we have selected. So go ahead and click the Extrude Region tool. And let's just pull it out just like this. And maybe we don't want it to be too thick. Oh, Control Z. Remember, if you do it twice, it'll, um, it'll extrude again. So if we do want to change the thickness later, you could go to the Selection tool. Go to the side like this. Turn on X-ray mode and select all the vertices we actually already have them selected so that's fine and now i'm going to turn off the toggle x-ray mode and go to move and now we could change how thick the letters are okay so that looks good click anywhere else to uh, deselect everything and now we have our three-dimensional text but it's still not connected to the box so we'll have to go back to object mode. And in Blender, it's a lot of switching between object mode and edit mode. So let's go back to object mode where we can move all of this text so it's intersecting with the box. So this is really important. You, you don't want it to be like this where it's the two faces are overlapping. You want it to be going into the object. That'll matter when we combine them. Um, and a little bit more is probably good. So let's go right about there. Okay, so how do we combine these two objects? Well, we could use what's called a, a modifier. So if you go over here to this blue wrench, this is the modifier properties panel, and we could add a property. Let's select on this, uh, our main object, the what was the cube. And let's add a modifier, and we're going to add a Boolean. So see how it shows these two objects here? Uh, this object can be connected to that object, or you can even subtract that object from that object. That's what that icon is showing. So we can go to the Boolean tool, and now we can select our object that we want to, let's do a union, so it's gonna combine them. Uh, and let's select on the text. So just do the, the picker tool, and we just select on the text. And I can see it's kind of bugging out, and that means it's working. So that looks good. And now we can go to this little arrow here and we could click on apply. Okay, so see how it's still kind of glitching like this? That's because we still have the text there. 
So we'll have to select the text and press X once again to delete and then click on delete. And now we just have our cube with the text that is perfectly connected to it. The last thing we could do is refine the shape to make it a little bit more professional. So let's select the entire thing and let's go back into edit mode and let's go to the bevel tool. And for the bevel tool, it'll be good to go to the edge selection mode. And now we could select on some edges and give it a little bit of a bevel. So let's select all of the outside edges on the bottom, like so. Now if we just drag this in like this, okay. So here's another thing that is really important in Blender and you'll encounter this um, a lot. So see how I'm trying to create this bevel here and it's kind of being weird. So I'm gonna press Control Z and get out of there. And let's go back into object mode. So this is something you'll have to do every once in a while, um, especially if we've changed the scale. So we can see our, our, the scale of the object is 30, 30, and 2.5. Um, we don't want that. We want it to be one, one, and one once we have the final dimensions set. So to do that, this is um, a little bit weird, but you have to press Control A, okay? And this will open up this here. That's Control A and that's Apply. It's the Apply uh, panel. If I go over here, you'll see it's Apply. That's Control A and go to uh, Apply. Let's apply Rotation and Scale. And now you'll see scale is one, one, and one. So that's a, a pro tip there. That's important whenever you're doing, um, uh, when you're trying to add a bevel to an object. And if you find that the bevel is being weird, make sure you check that the scale has been normalized. Okay, now let's go back and refine our shape, go back into edit mode. And now, now let's select all of these bottom edges and you'll see how it's supposed to look now. Hit pull it out like this. Now you can see it's actually a perfect 45 degree bevel. And once again, if you do it twice, it adds two bevels. So I'll press Control Z, Control Z, and I'll try to get the bevel right the first time. All right, there we go. And now I wanna add a bevel to all of the sides. So select all of the edges like this holding a shift to select multiple edges, just like that. And why not, let's select all of the top edges as well. Adding bevels just cuts the edge and makes it so it's not so sharp and rigid looking. It looks more purposefully designed if you add a bevel. Okay, and now we just do this. Okay, just like that. And go back to the selection tool. And now we can look at it. And that looks very nice. It's a more professional looking custom container. To export the file for 3D printing, we want to export it as an STL file. So all we have to do is go to File, Export, and then select STL. And now we could simply drag that STL into your slicer of choice. I like to use Ultimaker Cura. And there we have our really nice custom container. Go ahead and click Slice. And this will only take about three hours and four minutes with my 0.6 millimeter nozzle. You could preview it to make sure everything looks good. And I think that looks perfect. So there we have our custom container. So with just these few tools, just knowing about edit mode, object mode, and knowing about the Boolean modifier where you can combine or subtract things from each other, and knowing how to scale and move the nodes around and add text and add different default objects, you should be able to start designing your own things. I hope you found this helpful. My name is Steven and happy printing.